So you've bought all these synthesizers and you're ready to roll. One problem, no inspiration. Now, sometimes you try to force yourself to create something and you're just burning a lot of valuable hours with that. Is there a way to just come up with some inspiration if you don't really have it? Yes. What I do is I blend genres together, different styles of music and create them into one track. So today's video is on how to mix in different genres of music to make a convincing live set. You ready for that? Let's go do it right now. Hey, what's up? I'm in a location and thank you for checking out yet another video. Now, if this is your first time here, do not hesitate to click subscribe and hit that notification bell. Whenever I upload a new video, you'll be kept in the loop and you'll not miss out on anything. Stick around till the end of this video. I'll tell you all about our wicked and vastly growing community, namely on patreon.com slash Kitchen and the bridge that I have created through Discord, where we speak weekly on gas, on travel, on what synths to buy, what not to do. You can throw your demos in there, you can remix stuff, and you can even make some music with me. So if that's a cool thing, I'll tell you all about it. So hang around till the end of this video. Also, there's some music on Bandcamp. If you might be interested, I will stick it on there. And that's a nice way to support as well as through the affiliate links that help the channel and maintain the strategy that we're on, namely bringing cool content to you and creating this community. On today's topic, sometimes i get in a rut sometimes i just like get going and you know i'm convinced i have something in my mind but you know life happens and something stuff gets in the way so your initial plan doesn't work out and i was stubborn i've been stubborn i am known to be stubborn that i would like to just force myself and convince myself i can come up with something really substantial i need to fix something i've got this synth i've got this drum computer blah 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 yada, yada, yada. you know the drill so at some point I thought, wouldn't it be better to just maybe borrow stuff from stuff that has already proven itself? So why don't I look to the successes? I am not saying, okay, Michael Jackson sang this chorus, let's re-sing the chorus and hope for the best because a kid could work here after a cover, then it's no problem. But I'm talking about the different elements that make up certain tracks. Can you borrow? a groove out of a Michael Jackson record, stick a Bob Marley bass line on there, get a synth line that maybe Vince Clark has done, and you know, blend these things together, or even the sounds, and then you'll see, if you reach for that higher force, your inspiration all of a sudden pops up because these things have proven themselves. You get past your insecurity because you know you're working with stuff that cannot be you know, wrong, and in the end of the day, if you screw it up, it's you and only you to blame. So it gives you a bit of, uh, yeah, a convincing sort of like backup. I've got a few synthesizers I'm going to use for that. One is polyphonic and one is paraphonic. So there's a bass or lead driven synth and then there's the chord line. And then I think I can get some sounds to come out of the MPC as well. And there is a mini tower bass. Now, if, without further ado, if you're ready, then I suggest you just uh, strap in, fasten your seat belts and let's go do it. You ready? Let's go. All right, folks, now let's start with some drums, I guess. Um, what I have is got, I've got a setup. Like um, everything's got its own neat little place. So the beats are here. That's my beats. I've got a, a, a classic drum kit here. So we can do that Michael Jackson thing, right? So let's see if we can find a Michael Jackson drum groove. Okay, so I'll put it on 125, which is my um, go-to BPM that I'm using. Overdub. Two, three, four. I want 16s on the hats. Snare on the offbeat. Kick on the downbeat. Nice, okay? Nothing too complicated. Obviously, for dance music, this is not going to work. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to, I wanted to go for a bit of an 80s kind of vibe. So the, the drums are going to be 80s. Um, and this is going to be my 
it's going to lean in towards the back. I know that I'm going to play a kick and I'm going to see if the kicks are not conflicting. So my next um, track is dedicated to a kick, a kick that I use a lot of times. Let's see what it sounds like. Let's turn this off. Okay, let's see what we have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Did I record it? No, of course not. Cool. Because this is cool because I'm not going to play the double notes. Okay, I'm going to go in and mix it straight, which means I'm going to go to the pad mixer. Yeah, that's over here. And I'm going to go to that track two, is the kick here. I'm going to go to the beats. It's a bit on the loud side, let's kick. I'm gonna go to my kick drum. Nice, I'm liking this, cool. I'm gonna see if I can add a, another hat later. Let's see what I got on the drums, by the way. What have I got here? Okay, now, I think for now, this is going to work. I'm not going to make it too complicated. And then I'm thinking, ah, what else do I need? What else do I need? Now, I have got a Duran Duran sound already made on this Cork Mini Log XD. As you know, my favorite synth because of the ease of use and the way I can play my stuff on there. So, um, just for proof. Let's not um, uh, screw around with the lords of uh, copyright. So, uh, Obviously, that is something a sound I have created on this synth, which resembles uh, Save a Prayer for Me Now by Duran Duran. And that ARP is very melodic techno, in a sense. So what I'm going to do is obviously go to um, the track here, that I've not named, so I'm going to call this Mini Log, yeah, just for sake of keeping everything nice and tidy. That's Mini Log, no, that's not what I want, Mini Log, <laughs> nice. Do it! Okay, so, and then... Cool! Well, wow. let's record that in. But I'm going to play it in uh, my favorite chord here. Oh, record it straight in. There we go. Nice. I'll just lower it a little bit. Obviously, there's filter here as well. Unbelievable how this sound just changes, right? Now, I know that the BPM on this thing. It's 100 and, what was it? Let's see. It's 56 and it needs to go up to 125. For this track at least. So 125 is the BBL that we're working on today. Okay. Right. So now it's... Okay, and now I'm thinking, okay, a bass line. I just mentioned maybe something Bob Marley would play um, in terms of bass lines, right? So, um, Exodus, movement by, that's probably a good one. Oh, that's nice. Let's do that. I'm 
it's already moving, right? Let's bury this in the darkness as well. Okay, now from, in my liking, it's already working. It's already going somewhere. I think we need bass of some sort of moss that we've already nicked like to one of the greatest records of all time. So I'm gonna go in and see if I can find some pads. Pads coming from um, the Akai. Let's use some plugins. Huh? Let's do something controversial and not be that analog that we usually are. I'm gonna go in here, tube synth. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick them out of a different output so that I can manipulate them with the Acid Box 3. Yeah. Ah, what's not to like here, right? Okay, let's see what we have. I'm thinking, okay, bad. Nice. A little bit of radiate strings in there. Higher up a little maybe. I'm going to record it straight in. Okay. Let's here. One, two, one, two, three, go. Let's do that again. Let's screw it up, is that it? Two, three, and. Okay, made a combination out of the track. Yep, I'm liking it. Going to envelope uh, generate amount, uh, lower this a little bit. I want this bass to be a little bit more sobby. I'm thinking, can I play another lead with so, of some sort? I'm gonna go to the, um, let's say here that this is the tube synth. Tube synth, yep. Woo. I want to stick this out of a different output, output 3 and 4. So then I can LFO it up if I wanted to. Tap, 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 tap. Whoop. What's not to like here, right? Bury it. Okay, lower the bass. And the thing what I also do is once I play the bass line and there are notes that are in the way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can take out certain notes that are bugging me. Because this bass line is constantly going to the I'm going to see if I can alter the bass line a little bit now that I've got these things going, right? So the mini is here. I'm gonna go in and look for the notes. See, constantly there's a high note playing. What if we can alter that high note? Boom, boom. Play it maybe only the second time and only the fourth time. So what we're going to do is this. Place this. Boom. Boom, 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 
Maybe. And look what happens if I just take out the notes altogether. It gives me a little bit of a groove that I can play something else with now. Cut. Cut. I think that my track is already moving right now. So I've got Radiohead on the LFO strings. I've got Duran Duran on the uh, Mean Log XD. Got Bob Marley on the bass line. What's not to like? And now, to take your mind away from everything, because if I were to play you this track, you'd, th you'd probably recognize it. Probably the uh, Duran Duran track is going to give it away. But if I play something with the um, sub, something modern, something of now, you might not necessarily think or thought that I nicked everything from these old tracks. Let's see what we can do here. See what we can do? I'm going to look for a different sound. Here. Have you noticed that sometimes the, the MPC starts lagging? I had it just today, I was working on, an, um, on, a, on a workshop that I was doing, I could not record anything because it was so sluggish, so I don't know what the hell that is. Okay, find another sound. Help the bass line a bit. Bam, bam, bam. Ah, oh, there you go. Fine. Record it. I'm liking it. Left sound design a little bit on this sound maybe. I played a double note, I heard it. Tried to neglect it, but it's bugging me. Which is over here. There you go. What happened? This is what I mean with the uh, Akai sometimes, you know what I mean? Crazy stuff. Now this, in a nutshell, is how I get myself to just like get from one place to another in a way that I think like, okay, is this convincing? Yes, and then you build it from there. Um, 
inspiration loss, in my honest opinion, is something that feels bigger than it is. Uh, but it could get you to just like stop you dead in your tracks. But for me, it's just to get going. Now, that's two, three tracks that I've done today that I thought like, okay, yeah, this works. Um, if you got a certain way of working it, let me know. This is my thing. Obviously, the next thing to do is to work some more on the drums, maybe, because I think that I can use um, 808, 808 heads. So we might as well just see if we can do that. We'll play this. Okay, what I'm going to do. Okay, the drums. First of all, that kick that I have, I'm going to stick it out of a separate output, right? That's the first thing that I'm going to do. Now, I use this is a thing that i love about the midas mixer though the preamps sound absolutely amazing they did a great job in making those preamps sound a bit different so obviously if everything comes out of a stereo output which is what you're hearing now now this is just a stereo there's like obviously um eight mono and then two stereo outputs which makes it 12 right dm12 there you go so 9 and 10 is stereo and 11 and 12 are also stereo what we're going to do is stick the kick drum out of one and the kick drum even if it's stereo don't worry about it so we're going there you go Bam. output a one output two three four five six there you go then on the loud side which means then i have to just like so watch your volume at home because now things are going to get increased a bit I'm going to up the uh, volume a little bit because I want to fully open this track, right? I'm going to go in and see what I can do in terms of the uh, pad mixing that's here. I'm going to lower it a little bit. I don't mind this overdriving, but I don't want it to just like be... This is enough, right? And as you can see, I don't EQ anything on the mixer. I just don't EQ everything in here as well. So it's all down to leveling. So this is minus 90 B on the fader here, which... Uh, doesn't do anything here anymore. So I want this light to blink. That's what I want. Yeah? There you go. So you can actually make it out if you listen very carefully, very clearly. Listen. Hear it? Just ever so slightly, but it does a trick. And that transient. Uh, gets exaggerated on a a big sound system, obviously. So, okay, now we're gonna go for that drum. Yeah, that's sitting neatly. Now I need some more drums, obviously. I'm gonna go in. So I'm gonna go and on that kick track that I have, I'll probably no, well, no. Let's make a. Let's not be greedy. Go to a different uh, track. Go to that same drum program, which is here. We're going to go for a clip program. Oh no, we're going to go for a drum program, sorry. And then I'm going to add a sample to this. So we're going to say like assign samples, go in here and then browse. And then I'm going to go to my samples because I've got my samples set up somewhere. Nice. This is a nice hat. This is coming out of one of my tracks. Load. And then I'm going to just go in and say main, say edit samples. I'm going to just like find it. First I'm going to assign it. Let's assign it first. Assign a sample. Stick it next here. Ha open head loop. Cool. There you go. And I'm going to go in and say edit the sample. So we don't need them all. We just need one. So I'm going to go in. Get my hat going. And just make it sound smooth instead of the razor blade that I'm listening to right now, which is really doing my head in. Be sure that I'm straight on the first uh, transient. Nice, I'm liking it. At the same time, it's way too loud, as I just said. So, bad mixer again. Great, and what I need. Um, something to help this hat that's playing right here. So this is what's playing on 8th and on 16th I'm going to stick an 808 hat in there as well. So this is going to be my hats. Let me just put all the hats right here. Okay, so rename it hats. 
Cool. Okay. Okay. By this time I'm thinking, okay, Bob, you can play along. It gives me a vibe. Shape the sound a bit, maybe. Envelope generation also does something with that cable that I have. I told you about it. If you follow the channel, you know. I've got a diode clipper connected between the mini tower and the mixer, which means that right now it's all smooth, nice, and dandy, but from the middle I start to open up filters, or in this case, envelope generation. Let's see what happens. So it's nice. So the envelope generation knob now, it determines a little bit more on where I can set my sound instead of this. Because then it keeps, it stays nice and short instead of the um, filter that opens up because the envelope generation is going to just lengthen the note as soon as the filter goes up. As you can hear. And I need a little bit of attack so I get more drums and then lower the sound. Can I lower it more? Yeah. So it's a nice balance between, is it audible? Yes. Is it cool? Yes. All right. Okay. I'm going to move on um, before I run out of time. Um, yeah. 808 heads. So it goes for the browser. We're going to go stick them here. Say browse. I'm going to go out to my locations. Find them quick, fast. My own NPC sound banks. There you go. Vintage, that sounds like an interesting one. 808 sample pack, hmm, 606, 727, 707, TR-808. I knew it, and, and uh, kick drums. No, I don't need kick drums, I need hats. HT, open it up. HT is not high yet, HT is high tom. Woo! Well, now that I have it, let's make the best of a bad situation here. Now, screw that, I want the high end. Stick to the plan. Browser, we're gonna go in. Browse, we're gonna get out of here. Right, simple, open head. drum, right symbol, no tom, close hi hat. <laughs> there you go. Okay, load. It's already in it. Menu, two, sign samples. Took a while, but we got something in that. Okay, that there. No repeat. Straight up. Nice. A little bit of a roll in there as well. Make it sound a little bit more sophisticated. Okay, since I screwed up the roll, I'm going to half the sequence. And the sequence is, I guess, 16, so we're going to go for 8. See? So now it's only playing the first segment where I didn't screw up the roll. So now my roll is always cool. What I'm going to do now is go back. Uh -uh. I was afraid that happened. Okay. Uh, don't hit record. Uh 
gonna do, mate. Gonna go in for the roll and the roll in 16. Squirt him a roll. Do it again. There you go. Okay, cool. That's what I want. Back to the menu and back to the pad mixer. Here. Also, to make it a little bit more space, spread stuff out, right? We're gonna spread it out, stick this one on one side. So we're gonna go into the pan, if that will ever happen. Cool. Okay, there you go. Okay, let's play uh, some more stuff, right? Kick out. Okay, that's uh, unfortunate, but the hat's also coming out of the kick. But for this time, it works, I think. Drum, pa, 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 pa. Yeah, I think it can work with this. That's cool. Not too pleased with this line though, but you know what? For now it's all fine. But usually I'll think like, okay, what do I like? Taking that out. Where's the synth? Here. Kick out, hot out. Nice one. Next up, right symbol, I think. So we're gonna find a 909 right symbol, that's cool, to help this groove along a little bit. Filter this out. Mini Log XD. Still, those 808 hats are a bit on the loud side, I guess. So we're gonna go kill in, bad mixer. Nice one. going to do is go for a different track and say ride symbol. So first I'm going to rename it ride because I can get so sidetracked sometimes if I don't write it down I'm going to just do something else. Then we say assign samples. We're going to select this pad and I go in and say like browse which is very important. Get out of here. Bam. Get out of here. Okay we're going to go for the 909. Symbol. Crash right. Okay, nice. Uh, listen. Do we need a high one or, or a low one? What do you say? Too high? I think I'm liking this one. Yeah, load it in. Is it loud? Probably. Okay. Again, go in. Lower it considerably. Filters. And on. 
And the important thing is, you know, it's all to do with a little bit of music history. If you know where you're coming from and you know your classics, it works, you know. I mean, the 80s were renowned for synthesizing music, obviously. You can also think, of, okay, where do I find the content? You know, if you want bass heavy tracks, obviously hip hop, reggae, that kind of thing would work. If you're looking for groove, then go for funk, you know, funky bass lines also, you know, because now this is a Michael Jackson bass line. For instance, I could also think to change the bass line on, eh, maybe. Let's um, copy this over, eh, copy the sequence to another sequence. The next one I'm going to use more of a funk bass line instead of a reggae bass line. Let's try that. So let's say do it. Bam. Cool. And what we're going to do now is, this is the same thing. I'm going to rename it, as I should have done in the first place. Uh, do it now. We're gonna go to this baseline right here. Mini, go in. Get a little bit more of a funky baseline. Well, since we stole or got inspired by um, Michael's beats, let's see if we can. Yes, mini, mini, go. There you go. I got inspired by Michael Jackson's um, uh, drums, you know, just Billy G. Boom, ka, boom, bop, so you can even play them. See how it works together with this whole sort of like uh, Mini Log XD arpeggio? That's not where we want to go because that might be a little bit too obvious. But when you listen to Triller, now you got room to play something else. But I still didn't have a destination for my subsequent, so we're going to get into some sort of a call and response here. So I'm not going to play that, but what I'm going to do is play the bass line. One, two, three, in. Uh, uh, two, uh, 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 Nice. Okay, now let's find something to go in those gaps that the bass line is leaving for us. This time the bass needs to do something else. Maybe a little bit longer. Filter and flow. Nice. Okay, I'm gonna go in and get rid of that horrendous lead line that I tried to play but uh, butchered on the subsequent 37. I'm gonna go in. I'm not even gonna listen to it. This, this needs to go. You see? It's going down even. Get out of here! What are you thinking, bro? Okay. I'm still gonna think on um, that Michael Jackson thing though, but in a different sense, right? Why don't I hear anything? Because it's close. Ah, I deleted something, but not everything. I tried hard to not listen to it. It's the wrath of the bad synth lines that is taking uh, advantage of me. Okay, get something else. Okay, remember how this Michael Jackson line goes. That's what plays in the break when you're listening to Thriller, for instance. And then this bass line plays boom boom. So, very funky. I think it's a funky kind of vibe, completely different than the uh, Bob Marley vibe that we had earlier on. So, now I'm thinking that guitar line, is it something that I can borrow also? So usually the do 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 
Nice sound, a little bit too far away. That's the original line, now I'm going to try and leave some notes out though. Leave some notes out. Okay, go ahead in. Okay. What's happening to the end of this bar? My MPC is dying on me. Alright. Okay, I'm going to add it a little bit. Okay, that means that I'm going to take another note out. So most of the time when I'm playing stuff, I'm over producing still. You know, after so many years. Which means that instead of playing more, the answer most of the time is to do less. Okay, this works. Maybe I can do the same pattern here. Okay, and then I'm going to slice the. Now, I'm not going to go too far into this video, I'm just going to cut it up right here. But usually I would just like try and, and, and work the sounds and work, work it more, you know. But I think in the end of the day, I'm going to stop it and I'm going to just like say save it. That's what I'm going to do, save. So, how do we call this? We call this hybrid, hybrid hits, right? Hybrid hits. Oh, it might be a new genre even. Hybrid hits. Okay, now, uh, this is how I work it. I'm going to stick it on my, um, so, whoop, stick it here. All right, I guess that that's my flow. Thank you, and um, yeah, check it out. I'd like to welcome Patrick, Hassan, Jacob, and Matthijs van Bokhoven as my new patrons for this week, and they follow everything on patreon.com slash Kitchen, where I've bridged Patreon to Discord, and on Discord is where the magic happens. So, weekly, we talk a lot of stuff and we do that in the Discord chat, which is really cool. Even some people just like throw on their camera, so we're all chatting. There's Canada involved, we've got Australia involved, we've got England involved, Germany involved. So it's like a global thing where we all talk synths and stuff and it's really wicked. So usually after this video, if you're watching the premiere, which means you join up at Patreon, you won't be breaking the bank. And that's where you find like-minded people and we talk a lot of stuff, which is cool. We talk also about demos, making music, um, getting into the dollars thing and you yeah, just the topic that I touched up on today. How do you overcome um, writer's block? You know, if you're not inspired or you just don't know where to start, maybe this is an idea. It's just me thinking out of the box. What do you do to overcome your perils when it comes to uh, having inspiration? Let me know. Okay, now on the mixer front, in a few weeks' time, I'm talking weeks, not months now, it was years before, uh, the pandemic has lifted, so parts are slowly coming in left and right, which means that I think we've pretty much got what we needed to complete a prototype. And with we, I mean that Ferry's building, working on it, Christian's working on it. So um, yeah, I'm happy to say that um, it looks like we're going to have something in our hands pretty soon. And I'm stoked because you see me working with the Midas mixer. It's an absolutely amazing mixer, don't get me wrong. But when you get into a mixer in a certain price point, at a certain price point, uh, you'll see that it does what it does. Uh, everything that it promises that it will do, it will do. Yeah, so you're easily uh, cool to spend $230, $250 on a mixer. However, though, the parts that I use on the mixer might not be the best, like uh, spec um, uh, 
stuff that I stick in there. So what I've found is now that I travel with it a lot, it starts to crackle, it starts to break up a bit here and there, it starts to just tire up a little bit, you know, which is something you can expect with the gruesome, um, rigorous amount of work that I'm putting on it, you know, like jack in and jack out, jack in, jack out, you know, just rewiring stuff. I don't think it's built for that. In the studio environment, it should be cool. Hence the analog kitchen mixer coming soon. That thing is going to build to last, you know what I mean? It's one of those survive Chernobyl kind of things. That's what I wanted. I want the sound to be class A. I want the build to be class A. So you will be um, sorry checking that out. So keep your eyes on that. Now, um, as I said, there's challenges on my Discord channel as well, which is linked through Patreon, as you said. So, if you want to make some music with me, want to release stuff on uh, the Kitchen Club Records label that's coming soon, that might be a chance for you to just like get in there. And if you want to just talk to me and get some advice on how to overcome um, writer's block, on how to trust your ears in a different way, on how to work your performance, how to travel, how to perform, what to do, what not to do, that might be your one-stop shop to um, yeah, check some stuff out. Now, if you made it this far into the video, I think that you are an absolute superstar. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll catch you next week on another video. My name is Anna Kitchen, and I'm out. <laughs>